I'm prepared to say that the people who ran Silicon Valley Bank were substantially smarter than I. I just don't think they were smart enough to do what they did. I would never have tried it. Uh, I think that the Silicon Valley Bank people were at first beneficiaries and later victims of 40 years of easy money. 40 years where there was so much liquidity in the system that investors knowing nothing about technology were happy to value a startup at an infinite multiple of revenues. The whole community that Silicon Valley Bank financed was unbankable by people like me. I'm not suggesting that I should or would compete with Silicon Valley Bank. What I'm trying to say is that when the era of hyper easy money was over, and Silicon Valley Bank got confronted with a period of rising as opposed to 40 years of falling interest rates, they were unprepared to deal with it, partly as a consequence of their experience of history and partly as a consequence of their own hubris. Um, these guys were extremely smart, are extremely smart, but they existed in a hothouse where somebody turned off the energy. The truth is that they wouldn't have had to twist for too long. The franchise around Silicon Valley Bank, uh, which is to say the expertise with regards to the ecosystem in Silicon Valley is attractive. Yeah. Uh, there is ongoing concern value around that business. JP Morgan Chase would have taken that business at some price. Uh, and there probably could have been a, a bailout that was a private sector bailout to attract the deposits, much as has occurred with First Republic Bank since. The truth is that the depositors at Silicon Valley Bank are an extraordinary, po extraordinarily powerful group of human beings, uh, a group that I would suggest have probably made billions of dollars in campaign contributions. Right. Frank pointed that out. Uh, yeah. You two have um, uh, emailed your representative in Washington. You would have got an email back that said, thank you so much for your communication. The participation of citizens in a representative democracy is the core of the democracy. And we thank you for your input. <laughs> Stop. When the people behind Kleiner Perkins or Elon Musk uh, or whoever gives all the money to Diane Feinstein, let's say the Getty family or the Haas family, right. sends that same email, they get a call back immediately. Yes, sir. How can we help? What is on your mind? You've done so much for America by way of campaign contributions. <laughs> what can America do for you? So, uh, you know, the idea that the rationale behind the bailout had everything to do with investor confidence and nothing to do with the campaign contributions that emanated from the uh, depositors of the bank is at best naive. For me, this is a wonderful circumstance. If the value of the companies, which is represented by the share certificates owned by the person who asking the question, is unchanged and the prices are lower, that means the access to opportunity is cheaper. This is a wonderful thing. Remember that Buffett and others have said that you make money by being brave when other people are afraid and afraid when other people are brave. If in the case of uranium, you believe in the uranium narrative and that you believe that the upside in the uranium narrative is reflected in the business of the company that issued the shares, the fact that the shares went down in price is very good, however unnerving it might be. Just as in today's discussion, we have asked investors to understand something about the institutions that they made deposits in. We would ask, too, that shareholders understood something about the industries that they were investing in and the companies that they were investing in. I personally am delighted by the malaise in resource equities because I understand something about the businesses and I understand something about the companies in that business. And for me, despite the fact that I'm at age 70, uh, I'd like to become richer, which is to say that the access to opportunity uh, is getting better as the shares get cheaper. The confidence that allows me to say that is the fact that I've done the work. And the person that asked you the question needs to ask themselves, do they know enough about the Iranian business to be invested in it? 
And do they know enough about the companies to form an opinion about valuation so that they become comfortable rather than uncomfortable when the price of opportunity falls? So that they come to possess enough knowledge that they can be comfortable rather than uncomfortable when prices fall. It seems to be that $99 is a very good price for peace of mind. But there's something about a physical conference. There's something about being present with the people that you're trying to teach. There's something about being able to watch their faces when you're talking to them and see whether you're getting through or whether you're putting them to sleep. That's gratifying. This will be a four-day conference, uh, and people who aren't prepared to work hard for four days should not attend. This is not an entertainment event. This is an educational event. But we will have, with your help, uh, access to some of the best gurus, the big picture thinkers in the world, and not the kind of big picture thinkers who run for Congress or speak to you through CNBC, but rather the Bill Bonners of the world, the Jim Rickards of the world, people who present the world differently, but from my point of view, correctly. More importantly than that, though, Albert, we'll have access to some of the best analysts in the world. So that if you form an opinion with regards to the big picture, you can actualize it in your own portfolio, provided that your portfolio is interested in natural resources. More importantly than that, however, uh, we will have, as we have for the last 25 years, the living legends, people who have built multi-billion dollar natural resource companies from scratch and can talk to you about where the rubber meets the road how the lessons that they learned building multi-billion dollar companies makes them better resource investors and what they learned that can make you a better investor too. In addition to that, you'll be rubbing shoulders with five or 600 people who are natural resource investors, five or 600 rich, smart people. The ability that you have to listen to the, all of the information there uh, that you listen to questions that were dreamed up by others that you didn't have to dream up. <laughs> the people that you meet at the water cooler, the people that you have a beer with on the boat cruise is useful. Finally, having the ability to watch the interaction between the faculty and the exhibitors is wonderful. I had a person tell me four years ago that the ability to follow Robert Friedland and Ross Beattie around the exhibit hall at the Vancouver conference and listen surreptitiously to the questions that they asked exhibitors was worth more than the cost of admission. Remember that all of the exhibitors at any uh, rural investment educational forum, be it virtual or online, 